I'd say good opening hands here for both players. If you're Strasky, let's talk about what you're trying to accomplish over the course of this game. You're looking for interaction early and often. You're just trying to buy time, buy time, buy time, epiphany, boom, maybe a second epiphany, boom, and run away with the game that way. If you are Pardee, well, you're a deck without any one drops, but you do have two drops like Sculptor of Winter, and you're looking to beat down that way. Now, this might look a little bit weird, right? Casting an <laughs> Unseven on turn number two, what's the big deal? Well, well, Scrying one is always nice, but you just want to keep Mono Green off balance. Again, buy time, buy time, buy time, then big turns with Epiphany. That's the plan. Yeah, one strategy I've seen everybody who's played is it Epiphany against the aggro decks is just keep the creatures off the battlefield as best you yep. can. Because all of their removal spell, if you have a creature, which the is it Epiphany deck doesn't really have, all of their removal spells are dependent on their creatures sticking around. So the more you can keep them off, the, the less they ramp, the, the less hurt your face is going to be uh, subject to. Yeah, you see multiple copies of Fading Hope. That's a card that you're going to want to get familiar with over the course of this weekend to all of our viewers because these folks that are playing blue, even the non-Epiphany decks are playing a lot of copies of Fading Hope. And again, you're seeing, this is annoying, Sam Pardee with like a kind of just an affirming head nod of, yep, okay, there's the second one. Great, so now the battlefield is still clear. Strosky still at 20, and on an empty battlefield, drawing a card like Expressive Iteration, pretty nice draw step. So you see the game plan, and it's working thus far. This is pretty much what he wants to be doing in the early stages of this game. Essica's Chariot is going to get sent back to hand, divide by zero, allows teachings of the Archaics to be brought from the sideboard, and there is an Alrin's Epiphany off the top of the library, so Strasky is setting himself up quite nicely for several turns coming his way quite soon. Yeah, things are looking really, really good here for Strasky. Everything are going according to plan right now, and it's worth mentioning right now, too, that has drawn a copy of Test of Talents. Very poor card in this matchup. Great against the other blue decks, right? So doing a little bit of hedging here this weekend is Strosky with that main deck copy of Test of Talents. And again, not great in this particular matchup. Yeah, it can come up a little bit against Inscription and Blizzard Brawl, but for the most part, a whiff. But his draw has mm -hmm. been so good thus far, doesn't really matter that he's drawn it. Yep, he's, just, he's got something to do every single turn that it's going to come back to him just deciding whether or not to leave up the Dwyer Disruption or to foretell Elrond's Epiphany. That's going to get sent into Fortel. It'll be costable next turn. So Sam Pardee can't really do too much about that. He's going to dump some dudes down in the battlefield and fingers crossed that he gets a turn again. Yeah, now he's finally got something to stick on the battlefield, a 4-4 and a 2-2. Remember, these mono green creatures, they hit pretty hard, right? Old Ghost Trill, 4-4. Four, four. Faceless Haven on the battlefield, 4 power creature. Kazandu Mammoth can be a 5 power creature. Werewolf Pack Leader, Chariot, like this... This mono green deck, it deals damage in chunks mm -hmm. and a lot of it. So if you're Strosky again, you're just trying to bob and weave, keep these things off the battlefield as we saw in the first handful of turns until you can start copying Epiphany. Now he's got one over there on Fortel, but mm -hmm. he needs a Galvanic Iteration to go alongside with it or maybe chain some Epiphanies together. He hasn't found that just yet, Ailey, but maybe that's what that Memory Deluge will allow for. Yes, yeah, so you can see him pondering here several options available to him. Ideally, this this deck would make use of that Galvanic Iteration. That's a new card that's been added in here to allow one Elrond's Epiphany to become two. So you have two turns to find the third, potentially the fourth Elrond's Epiphany. That's, that's exactly what this deck wants to do, just to get away from everything. Uh, it's worth noting, as another chariot has been drawn here, again, for this Epiphany build that, that Strasky is playing, you know, you're not, we're not talking Doom Blades and Lightning Bolts here to keep these creatures <laughs> off the battlefield for good. We're talking about, okay, a little bounce here, a little bounce there. Come on, draw some cards, resolve an iteration, resolve a memory deluge, all that sort of stuff. Because, hey, the damage is starting to add up here now. Here's yeah. a chariot. Now, do you want to divide by zero this? Or do you say, all right, that's fine, I'll cast deluge. Looks like it's going to be divide by zero. Yeah, Isika's chariot is... Uh... Hotly contending the best card in standard spot with the several with several other big hitters. And uh, Divide by Zero is going to make sure that doesn't hit the battlefield just yet. Let's see what Strasky gets from the sideboard. No, he's going to go for the uh, discard and draw instead. Finds a land off the top of the library. Yeah, so here we go. Here's some bangers. Werewolf Pack Leader. you got Faceless Haven at the ready. Demon Bolt can eliminate at least one creature right now. This is kind of a new addition to these Epiphany strategies really good to copy right you foretell this on turn number two mm -hmm. then you play iteration uh and you and you copy your demon bolt and bang yep. blow up two creatures hasn't surfaced this game but yeah. that's kind of the idea behind that card 
Galvanic iteration has been a little bit uh, stage shy at the moment. But we'll find it. If there's anything this deck is good at, it is digging through the library to find all these key pieces to get the game plan going. Yeah, we may not be getting Galvanic iteration right now, but is it time to perhaps get a little bit more expressive? I think that's a question that Strasky might be asking himself right now. Or is it time to finally fire off this Island's Epiphany? Now, again, when we think of Epiphany strategies, we think about, hey, I want to do this twice. I want to copy yeah. this. I want to chain this together. I don't want to just meh, cast one and hope for the best. I really want to start <laughs> chaining them or cast them when I'm ahead to get further ahead. So we'll see if it's time for Andre to actually do this, or is he maybe going to go towards Memory Deluge or just hard cast a Demon Bolt? It looks like the Demon Bolt's going to be played. So yeah, many we're, options. Werewolf Pack Leader is a bit of a spooky card, especially with the other attackers on the battlefield, because that's yeah. a card draw engine. So recognizing that uh, without Ranger Class down, that would be one way for Sam D to pull even further ahead at this point. Like, Strasky's doing a great job of preserving his life total. He's at a healthy 16, but he's going to lose a chunk of that now, and he doesn't have anything to do against this Essica's Chariot, so... All right, looks like the Cadillac has arrived. Now, we take a look at the Faceless Haven that's hiding out over there. Well, there's a Field of Ruin on the other side, but one may be able to make the argument of, guess what? I'm going to untap and activate the Faceless Haven to force you to Field of Ruin, which means you can't cast another spell. doesn't look like that's going to be the case, so it's just going to be a Mammoth. And let's get into the red zone. Go, little Mana Dork. Well, kind of Mana Dork. You can yeah. do it. It can attack pretty well, that Sculptor yeah. of Winter. So now it's time. Now it's time to look at the top four and see how we do, if you're Strosky. See if we can take a look here. Hopefully what he's looking at. What does he bring to hand? Ooh, <laughs> baby. Okay. Oh, burning down the house. Did we find burn down the house and Galvanic? Well, that's oh, not. Oh, that's, that's gross. That's pretty good. Ooh. That's pretty nice. Oh, it might be time to, to, I don't know. Where, where do you go from here? It's so tempting to take two turns in a row, but you know, you could just murder an entire board of creatures. Yeah, so this is an interesting spot, right? Because if you do the, if you do the turns thing, if you do the turns thing, that takes you down one avenue. If you burn down the house, it takes you down another, but the, if you burn down the house, there's still a chariot out there. There's still a faceless haven out there. So yeah, I think, uh, I think our question might be answered here. It's time for a couple of turns, my friend. All right, sit tight, Sam. You might be able to knit a sweater in the time that uh, Strasky takes to take his turns. Let's see, we've got four birdies. And mono green sucks at blocking in the, in, in the air. So, <laughs> you know, if the draws line up here, Strasky could have a pretty good several turns and maybe Sam is dead at 20. We'll see. Yeah, re remember, this is the freebie turn, right? Because you got mm -hmm. another one coming after this. So this allows you to finally cast that expressive iteration, get a little bit deeper into your deck, try to find another copy of Epiphany, which you <laughs> did, easy, easy. which you, you did. So oh. there's that. And then we can do the gross thing of flashback Galvanic and then the mm. new iteration gets copied. Yeah, you can do that. You can, of course, have some interest in burn down the house to make the devils to get into the red zone and just yep. deal some damage that way, too. So it's all starting to add up here. And, oh, man, no. Yeah, it's getting ugly. It's getting oh, ugly yeah. here. Oh, yeah. This is this is basically... I, mean, I, I want to say it's lights out. It's looking pretty lights out to me, Cedric. Well, I thought maybe we might get another turn, but with Galvanic Iteration being the draw, there are no more turns coming here for Sam Pardee. <laughs> there are no more turns. Party time yeah. is currently canceled. Yeah, here comes another one, just like the other one. All right, Strasky, do it again. Whee! Yeah, Sam, Sam knows. Sam's He's had gone. Enough. He's, He's gone. out of there. Woo wee! Man, that just went perfectly for Strasky. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like, right? Little yep. bounce, little bounce. Buy some time, buy some time. Yes, Demon Bolt does kill things, but Fading Hope is so efficient in this matchup, and also the Scry does matter for, again, smoothing out the draws, making sure you hit your land drops, finding your epiphanies. And then from there, you just need Galvanic Iteration, and the rest of it kind of takes care of itself. So if you're new to Is It Epiphany, this is exactly what it looks like in game number one against Mono Green. Remember, too, Sam said, you know, either side of the matchup, it's debatable, right? He thinks the matchup is extremely close, though he does feel like uh, Strasky did bring some more tools to the matchup that give him a little bit of an edge. But Sam was like, look, for me, it's about winning the die roll. If I win the die roll, I feel pretty good about things. Well, he's going to be on the play here for game number two, so I'm curious to see how things are going to unfold. I don't know if Sam actually made any changes there to his sideboard. <laughs> he just hit submit so fast. Let's see how this game number two shakes out here. 
a couple of good options for this monogreen matchup coming in from andre strasky and if he has any start like he did in the first game this is going to be a mighty quick 2-0 against sam Pardee. Well, you see a pretty good opening hand here for Strasky. Smoldering Egg, couple divide by zeros. Of course, he needs a third land. But beyond that, things are looking okay. Now, he doesn't have, you know, Fading Hopes or Demon Bolt like he did last time. But he still might be okay because Smoldering Egg, that 04, can buy a lot of time. And Sam's start is not particularly fast. Uh, yeah, no, this isn't great. Tangled Florahedron coming down as Tangled Veil. Uh, no third green for the Old Growth Troll. Yeah, this is a brutal start. And that's a little bit of the trade-off of playing Faceless Haven, right? Faceless yeah. Haven, an incredibly, incredibly powerful creature land. But there is a little bit of a trade-off there uh, insofar as it is colorless. And also, one of the trade-offs with this deck is, you know, that's snow mana. Well, it's not all snow mana. Mm -hmm. Zandu Valley, Tangled Veil, vale, Faceless Haven, bit of a non-bow. Yeah. So as good as Faceless Haven is, it's not going to be doing... All that much right now. Here comes Old Growth Troll, and it's gonna jump straight back into hand here as Divide by Zero says, No, thank you. Smoldering Egg is gonna get counters on it, and just you wait until it gets four. Because we're gonna have a dragon that pings the living daylights out of everything. Uh, worth noting as well, this is a matchup too where it doesn't make any sense for Party to keep in removal like Blizzard Brawl. So once that Smoldering Egg does transform, one could argue that it's there for good. And that means that the four damage coming across in the air, the pinging, all that stuff, not really going to be able to be stopped by this mono green strategy in cyborgic games. So you love Smoldering Egg in a spot like this. You mm -hmm. like Smoldering Egg. It's kind of, you know, it's not a four of so much. You can play a couple copies because you don't really need to draw a second and a third one. But that first one, really good, especially on turn two. Hey, you know what I said about a dragon? Yes. We might be getting one here. Strasky was thinking about Unexpected Windfall. <laughs> oh, no, he's not going to do it. <laughs> I mean, you can make an argument that it might be time to turn up the heat a little bit here. What, and then burn down the house, right? No, no, just Unexpected <laughs> Windfall. Just, yeah, yeah, and just, and just kind of get busy that way. This is kind of interesting, because this is a simple, simple on-the-surface block with the Smoldering Egg. There is a divide by zero to protect in case of a pump or a snakeskin veil. There is that cheeky combat trick that Strasky is going to be aware of, but feels confident enough here, also with a demon bolt to take care of this werewolf pack leader. Yeah, this this looks. I mean, we are heavily advantage here for Strasky. His hand is beautiful. Here's old growth troll again. Maybe this time it will stick. I mean, sure, there's no Shark Typhoon or anything like that, but that's yeah, kind of what it feels like every time you're playing against a blue player. It's like, do they have it? Does this resolve? Yeah, and this is this is the unenviable situation to be into because Strassi's <laughs> kind of like, hey, you know, I kind of decide what I want to do here, which, you know, yeah. maybe yes, maybe no. It's like, all right, now I'll windfall. Dragon time. Woohoo! Yep. Let's go. Here comes the Ashmouth Dragon. It does love to ping things every time a, a spell is cast. Well, let's see if we start delivering some beatdowns here. Let's see, access to six mana hasn't played a land yet this turn, so access to potentially seven mana. There's a lot you can do with that with regards to Demon Bolt and Divide by Zero if you want to foretell or not. Burn down the house I don't think is going to work itself into the equation just yet, but it's always a nice thing to have in your back pocket in case anything goes too wrong, so... Strasky right now, as you see him kind of sit here a little bit, trying to figure out just how to navigate things, because I think he's got a pretty sizable advantage at this exact moment, and he just wants to make sure he can take the most advantage of it. Hmm. This is one thing I appreciate about watching the best players in the world. Is they will take their time. They will deliberate. You're not going to see any rushed, unless they've planned it out three turns ahead, you're not going to see any rushed turns. No, take your time. You got plenty of it. Werewolf pack leader looks to be the target of this demon bolt, Ashmouth mm -hmm. Dragon. Gonna get Smorky, dealing two points of damage to the old growth troll. Yeah, is this oh, when you wanna... this is, is so this... cheeky. Yeah, is this when you actually want to burn the snakeskin veil? Is it time to finally do that? Remember, snakeskin veil is a thing. Like, like everybody knows that it's a thing now at this point, right? You're not gonna take anybody yeah. by surprise. So you got to imagine that Strosky knows that's a card that he needs to think about, and Sam also knows it's a card that, mm -hmm. that Andre needs to think about. So. 
Man, that was actually a really, really nice play there from Sam Pardee, not using that snakeskin veil, preventing another two points of damage being dealt to the old growth troll. Yeah, just kind of hanging tight. Looks like they're going to see another troll here. Man, these things are big, and this mono green deck does hit in chunks. <laughs> We'll see divide by zero. Take care of that old growth troll for the time being. Another two points of damage done to Sam Pardee. Ashmouth Dragon putting in the work, and mm. it's time for a mascot exhibition. It very well may be. Goldspan Dragon. Yeah, okay, so now we, okay. Can just get, we can just get busy in the air now. We can really get busy in the air if we want to. I love how this deck transforms from, okay, I'm just going to be a bunch of spells and creature tokens, but then after sideboard, it it's really transforms into this creature deck. It's just like, cool, have some dragons. Yeah, but the, but the nice thing and the powerful thing about this Epiphany deck and the sideboard of games is that it doesn't have to transform into dragons if it doesn't want to, right? Mm -hmm. Like, imagine a world where you know that Sam is going to leave Blizzard, Blizzard Brawl in. You might not have that much interest uh, in, in actually... And actually, if they're going to bring creatures, you might want to leave Blizzard Brawl in, but you're kind of guessing in some respects about, like, are they actually going to bring in these creatures? Now, here's an inscription of Abundance. Let's see how this changes things in this game, if it does at all. Yeah, just pads the life total a little bit. Old Growth Troll able to take care of the Ashmouth Dragon, but there's still Goldspan and the three one ones swinging in here. That's going to be four, five, six. Trigger is going to probably be seven. That's going to go upstairs. The mascot Exhibition is the follow-up. Not looking yep. great here for party. I think party time is well and truly over, at least in this round. I think you are right, unfortunately, for Sam Pardee fans. But if you are an Andre Strosky fan, you hope he doesn't retire too soon. He's got more <laughs> winning to do. Certainly so. And it looks like he just wants to wrap up his top four spot, you know, potentially just keep winning. That's the easiest way to do it, right? Play less magic.